What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, coming from your mama's freaking basement, baby. Yeah, I know I'm late, and everybody say, Urban, what's up with you, man? What's up with you in the videos? You be dropping them like five days later. Well, I got to tell you guys something, man. I just came back from uh, Zimbabwe. You know, I was being chased by a couple rowdy mud midgets, you know what I'm saying? And these midgets, man, you know, they were grabbing at my feet and all that, and I broke away, and I escaped, and I slid down that mountain. And now I'm bringing it to you guys raw while I'm being chased. Yes, I'm being chased. You hear them guys in the background? Get them, get them, get them, get them. Anyway, I want to talk about that game about the Clippers. I want to just say a couple things real quick. First and foremost, kudos to the LA Clippers. You know, like I said, I'm a Lakers fan, but I love NBA. And, and one thing about me, I'm not a hater. You know, besides the Golden State Warriors, that is. I'm just joking. I just don't like uh, the Justice League of the USA. But anyway, kudos to the Clippers, man. You know, they've been going through a lot of up and downs, you know, for the last couple years, you know, with injuries and stuff like that. And I always thought that the Clippers would bring a championship back to uh, Tinseltown, you know. But, you know, like I said, the injuries and the curse, you know, they, they never can break free from. But anyway. Keep in mind, the Clippers is in the top five and, you know, one of the best teams in the NBA. The Spurs, the Clippers, the Warriors, Cleveland when they're healthy and when they're, you know, when they're on point. But, you know, <laughs> I don't want to talk about them. But anyway, and, you know, the Raptors want, you know, when they fell off a little bit. But anyway, the Clippers, to me, is it, still a good team. Now, keep in mind, they play the Lakers four times a year, right? So... Once, I, once again, this comes down to coaching. And what I mean by that is just an experienced coach playing a rookie coach. Simple as that. The Clippers came out on all cylinders. They were just freaking hot. How do I know? They hit, what, two half, what, what? Uh, they hit uh, two buzzer beaters. They hit, you know, two buzzer beaters. One was a half-court bank shot. The Clippers were just freaking on all motors. Somebody go get Detroit and tell them bring their cars down into L.A. Because these guys would not let up on the juice oil. Anyway, Kudo to the Lakers, offensive wise. Why I say this? Because the Lakers, for for a good point, a good portion of the game, played pretty good offensively. The only one that really had a bad game was JC, but that's bound to happen. That's what any player. I don't care if you freaking uh Bruce Lee, uh Bruce Lee Conway or what is it, Bruce Leroy. Yeah, Bruce Leroy. You know, if you know about Into the Dragon, Bruce Leroy. Y'all know about that. That's the uh the ghetto version of Bruce Lee. But anyway, the Lakers played pretty good to me offensively. You know. And let's keep in mind, Lou Walton gave mad praise to Brandon Ingram. I, I And DeAndre Page brought this up a, a while ago that Lou Walton is, I mean, Brandon Ingram is Lou Walton's main man. And he is right. And I've been watching, paying attention, observation, Brandon Ingram is Lou Walton's man. Lou Walton came out on Lakers Nation and said that Brandon Ingram needed to take the leader's role. You know, and I'm just paraphrasing it, but he's basically telling, you know, telling Brandon Ingram to, look, take this torch, young man. You are the leader of this team. Not so much DeAndre Russell, you know, you know, sliding to the side. And he also gave Brandon Ingram praise, said, you know, he was kind of upset that he set Brandon Ingram out, you know, based on the fact that the other four wasn't playing so good. And when Brandon was playing pretty good, to me personally, let's be real, if we look at the stats, when the, when DeAndre Russell and Randall went out, they were down, it was 33-24 to 24 when these two individuals went out. Jordan Clarkson went out before them because they brought uh, Nawaba in at early you know, to play defense. So when these two went out, it was 33-24, all right? Now... When they, when they, and the only one was on the floor then at the time was Ingram, and then they brought Jordan Clarkson back in. Jordan Clarkson, Ingram, okay? Then, eventually, um, Jordan Clarkson went out. All right, Jordan Clarkson went back out. They had Ingram out. They had the whole bench in. And this before they went, um, in, 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 this before they went into the second half. And that, in that second quarter, they got, I mean, they got beat so brutally. I mean, the second unit got beat so brutally. That it was what 54 29 before they you know before they decided to bring um bring Russell and all them guys back in. I mean, let's be real though, you know, the Lakers, even though he said they played, you know, and, and, and we all know the Lakers, the biggest Achilles heel for the Lakers is their defense. We all know this. The Lakers offensive, like I said before, they can score with anybody. The biggest problem is defense. Now, offense is a talent. You know, offense, you know, that's something that's a talent that, that comes with that individual. Defense need to be taught. And that's where discipline comes in at you know where guys really need to learn how to play defense i was kind of upset with luke walton for not letting these guys start i was kind of upset for him to leave these guys off for a long period of time even though they still got good minutes but they got to go through these growing pains in order to become a developed team of players they're all young you know yeah no one likes losing but you got to let them go through it don't be upset with them luke walton because to me my friend you're sending out mixed signals everybody they aren't woolly t-shirt up, up the street 
the grandma who sell food stands for a dollar everybody knows that these individuals well this organization as a whole is tanking in order to get Lonzo Bell let's be real y'all want Lonzo Ball so y'all tanking to get this individual so when you say that they make me upset you know they kind of piss me off not really in, in so many words that he said that that way but you're basically stating that you're upset with him because you know you you telling uh Laker Nation that you want them to win you know they got to learn to win so my thing is this if you're trying to teach them to win then how can you teach them to win when you already set up to lose you understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make any sense. You're confusing not only me, but the players as well. You know, the players in their mindset, they already know. They watch They watch social media. They watch Twitter and all that. They know the Lakers are tanking. They know their team is tanking. You know what I'm saying? So you can't hide it from them. Back when we didn't have social media, you could hide that. But now, because we have a lot of talking going on, everybody's paying attention to the uh, newscast, analysts, and all this. They know that they're tanking. So the Lakers, to me, that's why I say that this, why, this whole second half of the of the season is that you should actually let the lakers develop let them play it out if they're struggling let them struggle you know my thing of the day you are going to lose anyway that's the whole concept is to lose to get into the lottery pick so it doesn't matter the whole point is that you want to get these guys to learn to play learn to well basically develop you know everybody should have opportunity to develop their own you know they they, they mechanics of that individual like Julius Randle have opportunity to work on his low post moves his jumpers work on uh defending man to man you know zoo block you know can work on his um low post moves being a better defender all of them can work on certain criteria that are actually going to help them propel them for the next season that's what i look at and i told people they say well you can do it after all season there's a big difference between all season and in the regular game the regular game you actually have competition you actually got somebody putting their hand in your face somebody being a little aggressive and it's not your coach or a teammate you know what i'm saying so it's a little bit different Whereas the off season, you know, you just practice, just doing shoot arounds. Actually, for example, Jordan Clarkson, what hit tw what twenty something threes in a row, but then he goes in the game. It's like now, it's like freaking shooting what thirty something percent behind the three point arc, can barely hit sh three pointers. So it's the, it's the competition, it's it's the the thrilling rush, um, the drilling rush that you know, hey, I, you know, I got somebody playing against me. But anyway, the Lakers play good to me. I, I like I'm saying, Luke Wall was kind of sad when he set him down in the second half. When he set him down in the second half, you gotta think about that senior unit had nobody in there that could score. So yeah, the uh, Clippers just played around with him and kind of finished him off. They brought him back in. Um, they brought him back in. You know, when the score was like 101-69, you know, um, that's when he brought all the starters back in, and then the starters actually climbed back in it. I think that at the end of the day, that Luke Wall should just let him play it out. You know, don't be upset with him because you already know that you're tanking. Just let him play it out. This is what they got to learn. They got to learn how to dig their way back out of, you know, situations. You know, don't just like, okay, well, I'm going to bitch you guys because you guys ain't playing good. But, Brandon Ingram, you, you're playing well, but everybody else is not playing good. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, none of them really play good defense. I mean, it's, it's the Clippers, man. These guys were just, they were just shooting everywhere, man. I mean, God damn, they were in 20, 25 foot jumpers, man. I mean, you, you, they were just freaking hot. Sometimes when a team is hot, there's nothing you can do. You see, y'all seen the game when the Lakers were freaking hot. Remember that one guy? I forgot who they were playing. They were freaking hot as crap. And they were beating the team by 20 points, but the, the team came back and beat them. You remember that in the fourth quarter? They came back and beat them when the Lakers was hot as crap. And they came back and beat them. They beat them by 30, what, 25 or something like that? And the team came back and beat them this year. Yeah, don't forget it. But anyway, let me go to the stats because, like I said, I, I was kind of happy for the uh, for the Lakers. You know, Randall, 7 for 13, was 1 for 2 behind a 3-point arc. Um, free throws is one of the biggest things that the Lakers definitely got it. They got to look for that contact. You know, it helped them in a lot of many, in a lot of a lot of ways. You know, especially when they're not really a good free throw shooting team. It had built their confidence to get them to the free throw line to start making them shots. But anyway, Randall, 19 points, seven rebounds, three assists. He had a block. He had a steal. He played pretty good to me. I know a lot of people say, "Well, that's towards the end, Urban." I say, "It don't matter. You playing 48 minutes or how many minutes he played? He played 31 minutes. It don't matter. In the, the day, you're still on that floor." Brandon Ingram, he played 40 minutes. 8 for 14, starting to look good. 2 for 4 behind the arc. Got to hit the free throws, though, young man. 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 21 points. Like I said, they, 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 so he's starting to, starting to gel, man. He's starting to look good. Zoo block, 8 for 14. Um, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 17 points. Jordan Clarkson didn't really do too much. He was 1 for 9, 0 for 4 behind the 3-point arc. He did hit his free throws, though. He had 5 assists, 3 rebounds. Um, and that's probably ended up with 5 points. He was just struggling. Uh, D. Russell, and, and also they had to do, you got to keep in mind, Jordan Clarkson, he had, they had him, Jordan Clarkson running with that second unit too. And like I said before, when, when Jordan Clarkson or D'Andre Russell, Russell is running with that second unit, it's kind of bad because everybody is not uh, basically a person that can um, can score on their own. You know what I mean? They're somebody that you got to set up. And basically, the only one that on that floor at the time was Jordan Clarkson. So that's the same with D'Andre Russell when they used to start I mean, put D'Andre Russell with that second unit. You know, and that's why I say, forget the second unit. 
work on the young players and get them to develop so that way we can build from that. Anyway, Russell had another good game. 715, 3 for 7 behind the three point arc. You know, one for two, he had uh five assists, three steals. And I know a lot of people say, well, Urban, you know, that's the one you know trash time. It doesn't matter. The point is at the end of the day is that these guys gotta be on the floor in order to develop. He had 18 points. He's still doing his thing. You know what I mean? I respect that. Larry Nance didn't get that many minutes. I was hoping that he got, you know, some more minutes, but he only got eight minutes. He didn't get too much. Now, I was one thing I was excited about, and all y'all should know by now. My man T Rob got some minutes. He only played 10 minutes, but he got some minutes. And in 10 minutes, he scored 16 points and had six boards. I'm telling you, Rob, man, t Rob is pretty decent. He's just playing out of position when he plays center. But he's pretty good. I like him, man, at power forward. I wish that the Lakers can really, if Julius, put like this, if Julius Randle or Larry Nance really get to start, uh, be more confident in knocking down their shots and, you know, be able to hit, they can move Larry Nance and Julius Randle around. They, they can put him at the small forward spot depending on the matchups. Because some guys, Julius Randle actually are faster than some of these guys at, at the power forward spot. You know, believe it or not, because he's like a small forward. He's like a power forward. In, uh, uh, he's like a small forward in a power forward's body. So the only biggest problem, like I said, has always been the Lakers' defense. You know, Corey Brewer came in for 12 minutes, ain't do too much. Um, Tar Black got some got some minutes, ain't do too much. Ennis ain't got ain't do too much. He did hit five points though, but Nawaba 14 minutes. Um, not a big three point shooter, but just enough for defense. The Lakers, to me, like I said, you know, kudos to the Lakers. You know. Uh, if anybody want to call it, I'm going to call it. Kudos to the Lakers. I like the idea that these guys are actually scoring. They're starting to fill themselves offensively. Now they just got to work on defense, man. And like I said, you can take the whole rest of the season to work on that. You know, that's something that, you know, it's based on, you know, communication, footwork, you know, standing in front of your men, you know, understanding uh, schemes, and also getting in, the, getting in the film room and watching, um, studying and watching teams, man. You got to start taking this thing serious. Somebody said that the Lakers need to hit the gym. The, listen, when Magic Johnson came in there, them boys may hit the gym since Magic been there. So that that's that's out of the water. Magic Johnson already got them boys hitting the gym. You, you can tell by the offense because now they're starting to score. Even Brandon Ingram starting to starting to score. And the net, now this is the reason why I think Brandon Ingram is getting a lot of minutes. And this is why Lou Walton is pushing him. Out of respect to Lou Walton for this, I think Lou Walton is pushing Brandon Ingram not only to be a leader, but also to get the MVP award, which would be nice for the Lakers. At least we'll have something, right or wrong, guys. You know, it'd be nice to have some type of award come this year. You know, not MVP, I mean Rookie of the Year award. I'm talking MVP, man. You know, y'all know that's going to Harden. I know uh, Westbrook fans will love it. I, I thought Westbrook would get it too, but I think it's going to Harden because, uh, simple fact, Harden is just, he's doing a damn thing over there in Houston. Anyway, I think he's helping Brandon Ingram. He's trying to help Brandon Ingram. Make that last run in order to get um, rookie of the year. And right now, if Brandon will keep up, you know, I think after the All-Star break, averaging what, 15 points, if I'm not mistaken? If Brandon will keeps up with this pace, he might have a chance to win it, to be honest with you guys. Because right now, it was, uh, it was um, um, what's his daggone name? Uh, from, oh, my gosh, it, it's, it slipped my mind. Um, anyway, the guy from the, uh, from the uh, uh, 76ers, it skipped my mind. He was on, on pace to actually get it till he got injured. So now it's Brandon Ingram and uh, the dude from, um, I think it's the Boston Celtics. Yeah, the Boston Celtics. These two are like right now in the race to get it. So Brandon Ingram has a big shot. Oh, and I think Buddy Hill might be in there too. But anyway, kudos to the Lakers. I love it. I mean, just keep doing what you got to do, guys. Be a little bit more consistent. Work on your defense. That's all I'm saying, guys. Work on your defense. I have no, listen, I know they got blown out. I said that I, I hate when the Lakers get blown out. But you know what? It is what it is. I feel like at the end of the day, when 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 uh when Luke Walton took them out, they were only down by a little bit. He brought that second unit in a little bit by a little bit, and they actually exposed the second unit because we really got no scores out there. We got nobody that can actually put the ball on the floor and, and go to the basket. So the Clippers took advantage of it, and it got to a point where he brought the starters back in. And it was just uh, a hill they had to climb out of, you know. I mean, it happens. But Luke Walton tried to play the role like you know, well the, the team need a we need to win more. I want to get these guys to you know to start winning games that we should be right there. We winning winning. I understand that, but we the fans already know that we're tanking. So we we just expect, I guess most fans expect Alonzo Ball. And I, I'm going to make a video, too, about um, Ball and Jackson. And I'm going to tell you my opinion on what I think between these two and how things can work out. Anyways, your man, Urban Lover, like, share, and subscribe. Get in the comment section. Tell me what you think about the game. I know this is late, but I still like to hear what y'all got to say. I'll try my best to get in the comment section and wrap it up with you guys. Even you haters, get in the comment section and tell me about your hating on Russell, Brandon Ingram, whoever you want to hate on, Randall. I don't care because I just want to talk to you guys because I love you as well. Take care, guys, and get ready for that game tomorrow against the Minnesota Timberwolves. I can't wait. Arroo!